thank you all. Um, yeah, I didn't write that that piece of <laughs> marketing thing, but yeah, things that happen. So yeah, let's talk about Rocket. So first of all, a bit about me. Uh, I'm Diago Lopez, and I work at a company called Endocode, and we're a small company um, doing DevOps stuff for clients and also building the DevOps tools like Rocket or yeah, more stuff. And since the beginning of the year, we've been collaborating with CoreOS uh, on Rocket mainly. And yeah, it's been a, a great, great job to do. So yeah, well, first, what is Rocket? Well, Rocket is a, a command line interface for running Linux application containers. Um, it's an implementation of the AppSea spec. So what's the AppSea spec? Well, the AppSea spec is uh, a specification for running uh, Linux containers that was created by CoreOS, um, like I think November last year. And since then it has received like a lot of uh, yeah, contributions from other companies like Red Hat, for example, or individuals. So yeah, these are the main goals of the AppSea spec. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's uh, thought as secure from the beginning. So thinking of security from the beginning with cryptographic image addressing and image sign, uh, signing and encryption. Um, so it was designed with, with these things uh, right from the beginning. And also things like uh, providing container identity. So several containers can trust each other uh, via a third party that's outside uh, all of them. And yeah, it's standards based, so it doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. It's using uh, well-known tools like uh, tar, gzip, gbg, http, all of that. And it's also one of these goals is uh, to be composable, so it integrates well with uh, existing init systems and, and process managers, and again, doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. If the code is there to, to do something you want, you just use it. So, yeah, the, the main parts of the, of the spec are the format. It's uh, called Application Container Image, a or ACI. And yeah, it's basically a, just a tarball with the rootfs of the container and a manifest that describes what's going to be run there. And yeah, what are the restrictions you want and, and all of that. And as I said before, um, one of the goals was to have these uh, content addressable images and we we do that by uniquely identifying an uh, image by an image ID, which is a hash of the, of the image. So one interesting uh, thing about the spec that I find very interesting is how you discover new applications. So the, the idea in Rocket is that there's no centralized store. It just uh, reuses the DNS namespace. So if you have an app uh, named example.com HTTP server, and you want to go from that name to the artifacts that the app is composed of, like the, the image or the signature. So uh, the idea here in Rocket is that you uh, do a HTTPS request to that server, you get the HTML, and there are some uh, meta tags that tell you where exactly the images are, are located. So I think that's, that's pretty interesting because it's decoupling the discovery of, of images from the actual artifacts. And yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Um, well, so back to Rocket. Um, it's implemented in Golang, like almost everything in containers and in cloud nowadays. And it runs on Linux. So it is self-contained, as in it's just a binary. And it's in its system agnostic, as I said before. Um, it's CLI only. There's no daemon, uh, like with Docker, for example. So if the, your daemon crashes, uh, uh, well, all the containers crash. So with Rocket, you don't have this problem. It's, it's just a normal process. So apps run directly under the spawning process. So uh, yeah, whether it's Bash, RUnit, or Systemd, it doesn't matter. Rocket runs under it. And uh, the parent limits, so if you apply a limit to, to say, a Systemd service file, uh, these are respected on the, under, uh, the, the applications running under it. So that's also something that uh, a lot of people complain with with Docker. If you if you apply a limit on the Docker on the yeah on the command that runs the Docker image, it doesn't apply to Docker. You have to apply it. I mean, you have to configure this limit on Docker itself. So that comes back to not reinventing the wheel and use something that 
yeah, that already works. Um, so in Rocket internally has a model architecture. So uh, Rocket is divided in uh, three stages. Uh, the stage zero is the actual Rocket binary, which performs the discovery and the retrieval of images. Um, it's and sets up all the container file systems. And stage one is the execu execution environment, which um, um, yeah, it just uh, manages the app processes and applies cgroups and all that stuff. And the stage two is the actual app execution. So the idea here is that you can swap stage ones, for example, and uh, do something else. By default, the stage one in Rocket is uh, a minimal systemd server, a uh, server, sorry, a minimal systemd uh, uh, um, a minimal systemd system. <laughs> yeah, that's complicated. And uh, yeah, basically, it's uh, started by systemd and spawn. And this system contains several service files for each app of your container. And uh, yeah, so that's the default, but you can change that. Uh, we are working on a stable ABI between stage zero and stage one, so you can just use whatever else you want to use. And we'll talk about this a bit later when I talk about uh, what's new in Rocket. So yeah, the idea here then is uh, the, the, the stage one runs the container, and each app in a container, we call it pod, uh, it ru runs just in a CH root, so we don't need uh, isolation there. But you can apply restrictions to each app individually as well as to the whole pod. So yeah, networking is a very interesting uh, topic because it's complicated. And for that, in, in Rocket, we have uh, uh, CNI, which is an extensible plugin-based system. It's called Container Network Interface, I think. Yeah, that's the, the acronym. So it's basically a plugin system. Uh, yeah, we heard before. Uh, I, I don't know who was talking about the a plugin system, but yeah, I, I heard it before, on uh, tonight. And yeah, basically, it has several types of of networks uh, configurations. So Mac VLAN and IP VLAN are the technologies that are used, or or a, bri or a simple bridge, and then. It has a, a way to, so you, every container gets an IP via DHCP or just manually with the host local plugin. So yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting. It's, it's very cu customizable and uh, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Well, so what's coming for Rocket? Uh, so we are approaching the release 08. I think it will happen this week. So it's not quite there yet uh, in terms of especially UX or documentation. Uh, but yeah, we're trying to, to push to push those fronts to try to get something polished like uh, Docker is right now. Um, we are trying to push even better integration with SystemD, where we integrate uh, with the machine D, uh, inter interfaces. So you can list machines and, and list the logs and do that kind of stuff. So we want something even more integrated so you can use all the tools from SystemD. And we are trying to implement uh, retrieving images via BitTorrent, BitTorrent, I think it is. And and we're also trying to package Rocket in Distro so people can actually use it, uh, yeah, with the Distro package manager. Okay, so one cool thing that we talked uh, about before too. Uh, how was your name, uh, Chris? Okay, <laughs> so username spaces is a. Uh, Okay, it's not like super new, but it's a pretty new technology in the in the namespaces front, and um, yeah, I don't think it's ready yet for the reasons I'm gonna say now. So, the initial support that we are planning to to do, yeah to implement. So th you have this problem with containers, right? You you have some images that have certain users, and the images are uh, yeah. They are you, you get them from the internet with those users, and these things are stored uh, on the file system. So what you have to do if you want to run wi uh, under a different user namespace is to apply a shift to all these files, uh, so it runs. So you can run several containers uh, in the same machine with different user ranges, and since these things are in the file system, you have to actually do the shift on the file system. So uh, you have to copy each image for every execution for every container execution and shift uh, these UADs and and group IDs. 
So that's not ideal because then you lose all these properties of, of the copy and write uh, systems like overlayFS or um, yeah ZFS or whatever you use. So that's not ideal. And yeah, after this initial implementation, we will we'll try to get proper kernel support. And our idea is that every time you mount a file system, you can s uh, say, okay, I want to shift these UADs in, in this file system, like 10,000. And then you, you will have uh, proper user namespace support and you can take advantage of, of these um, copy and write technologies. It requires the kernel modification, so it will take a while. But yeah, we'll, we'll try to, to do that. And uh, lastly, um, this thing, yeah, the basic support got merged uh, last week. So there's this, this Intel clear containers uh, thing. I don't know if you heard about it. But it's basically a KVM that, well, it's LKVM, so it means you can only run Linux on this KVM. But it's supposed to be very, very fast. And I can tell you it is. So you can start a container like the uh, at the same time as you can you start a real hypervisor uh, machine. So um, that required minimal changes to to Rocket because it's basically just a different stage one, one of these stages we were talking about before, and some small changes to to stage zero to set up more stuff. But it was really really easy to integrate, and we've been getting help from the Intel guys. So yeah, I think in the next release, 08, we will have uh, this basic support with networking and volumes. So you can actually use it. It's not just a proof of concept. So yeah, I think that's all I got. So thank you.